Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Catherine Basu, and I'm really excited to introduce you to today's guest because she's awesome, but also she is helping me on my not-so-secret-anymore mission to inspire as many of you as possible to start running. So why am I on that mission? It's because running has had such a positive impact on my life, and I want to pay it forward, and I know that running can be daunting or not-so-exciting when you are just getting started. So if you are new to the podcast and haven't listened to some of the other episodes, I've had runners of all levels on the show, all different types of running journeys. I highly encourage you to go to the show notes, but people from Dina Castor, who is our American women's record holder in the marathon and very inspirational, even beyond her running advice. So definitely check that out to runners who We're on a similar journey like today's guest. I had Kendall Sweet on, who is the runner behind the Running With Strength Instagram account. And she went from hating running to becoming an Ironman athlete. So if you're out there listening and hate running right now, I encourage you to bravely give it one last try and see if you can enjoy some of the many benefits that us runners get to enjoy. So a little bit more about today's guest before I have her share her running journey with you. My guest today is Vanessa G. She is the runner behind the Run It Off Instagram account and blog. And she started out hating running. She only did it because she was a soccer player and would run to help her soccer game. But then she had three injuries on the same knee and her doctor told her she could not play soccer anymore. So she started running reluctantly at first, but She has since become a really big runner, and I'm really excited to share our conversation with you. Well, welcome to the Fit 15, Vanessa. I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So listeners who are on Instagram might know you as the Instagram handle, Run It Off. (laughs) Correct. So can you share just kind of your journey of, you know, creating that account and how that fits into running and what you've been, been up to lately? Sure. So I've had the Instagram run it off for about four years now, I would think. And it actually started in New York. So I actually went to a college school in New York. And if you've ever been to New York, there is a huge running scene with the Mm -hmm. New York Road Runners and there's an even bigger food scene. So in school, it was always, you know, study, study, let's go out to eat. And Mm -hmm. my friends actually became fairly large foodies on Instagram And so we would go out and have these amazing meals and dinners. And I would kind of realize that, wow, these girls actually aren't eating all the food in my place now empty because I devoured everything. (laughs) And so I was like, oh, I I, I need to start participating in the New York Roadrunners races to kind of run it off. And then Mm -hmm. um, I kind of just started doing that. And uh, people that I would hang out with be like, oh, yeah, I ran a mile today. I can eat this entire piece of chocolate cake. And I'm sitting there right ahead. I'm like, no, one mile, about 100 calories, still not the equivalent. And it kind of dawned on me that people would always be like, oh, yeah, I, I worked out for 30 minutes. I can eat whatever I want today. And while it's mm-hmm. good to have that balance, I was like, do people not really realize how much running or exercise it is to burn off your calories? So I started running off initially to show all the food and the equivalent miles to run it off. Mm -hmm. And it slowly kind of took off from there. And as I started doing more and more races, I would always finish the race and kind of wonder, can I go a little bit faster? Can I run a little bit faster? Because I was never a runner. I Mm -hmm. always hated running. I was a soccer player. And then it kind of became that my own competition with myself. And that's when I really developed the love for running and realized the more I ran, the more I could eat. And (laughs) just kind of sharing my love of running and food, blossom in there, run it off. Awesome. So, so your running journey has been a little bit more, more recent or kind of correlated with the, the start of run it off the Instagram account in your, in your blog. Yeah. Yeah, So um, run it off definitely started more food and Instagram. And then 
Um, I try to get involved in also making healthier meals and showcasing kind of where I ate. And that's when mm-hmm. my blog started. And people would always ask me, oh, how was your raise? How did it go? And with Instagram, it's very much you put the best photo on it. You know, you're always smiling. Sure. You're always seeing something. But I want to show it's not always, you know, enjoyable. It's not always easy to do. And so with my blog, I started giving updates of, hey, this was the hard part that I went through with my run. This mm-hmm. is where it got difficult. So that's where the blog kind of took off. I love that. Yeah, you have the running, like the race recaps that people can go and check out, right? Yeah. And then they can actually see, oh, that race sounds fun. Um, and then I like to put in, you know, where I stayed because that was the things mm-hmm. on the race website. You'll go in and they'll have their recommendations, but sometimes that fills out or depending on where or why you're even going. I try, my goal is to run a marathon in every state. Mm-hmm. And it's more of an excuse to go travel. Yeah. So I like to show people, hey, this is where I stayed and I was able to do all this in addition to running. And so just kind of giving an unbiased third person view of, hey, this is where I stayed. This is how long it took me to get there. I would recommend staying here or, well, I missed this one. Do not stay there. It's not going to work. <laughs> so how many marathons have you run so far? Um, I have now ran nine marathons in okay. seven states. I try okay. not to repeat, but mm-hmm. a few of them I've made exceptions for. Uh, specifically, I ran two in California now, and mm-hmm. then um, I will be running Boston again next year, and I will gladly run a Disney marathon anytime. <laughs> but I've only done one yeah. so far. Okay, cool. So I guess with all those different marathons that you've completed is there one that's like your favorite or because I guess I guess we should mention too you haven't only run in the U.S. you've also run around the world so correct lots, so that's lots the other goal. run uh run a marathon every continent and again it's just an excuse to travel um this past May I actually ran the Great Wall Marathon which mm-hmm. is literally on the Great Wall of China which is just as hard as it seems but mm-hmm. I actually ran it with both my mom, my dad, and my husband. And so oh, cool. we really made it a, a family event. It was for the photos and the experience, not for time whatsoever. Hi, friends. It's Catherine. And that sound is your halfway point reminder. If you're joining us for an out and back walk and only have 15 minutes, you will want to turn around now. All right. Back to Vanessa. And that was the uh, through a company that actually hosts these races around the world. And they have another one in Petra, Africa, Arctic Circle, everywhere. So um, China, I would possibly do again. Uh, You have to love stairs. And I mean, uh, even stairs to do that one again. But if I had to pick a race, I would recommend it would absolutely be the Dopey Challenge at Disneyland. Okay. Just because... There is no experience like it. For those that aren't aware of what the Dopey Challenge is, it's where at Disney World, you actually run a 5K on Thursday. You run a 10K on Friday, a half marathon on Saturday, and a full marathon on Sunday. And you actually get to run through all the Disney parks. And it was just amazing. I mean, I'm impressed because I have a friend or actually a client who's done some of the run Disney challenges, but the half marathon and, and the other two races, but not the marathon. I don't even know. I love running marathons, but I don't even know if I would, if I would do all, all of those in, in that short mm-hmm. time. So you have my, oh my, my uh, admiration. <laughs> those you do not go for time. Those you go to enjoy it. Sure. Sure. No, that's awesome. So you, have you done any of like the half marathon weekends or like, could you compare that at all? Or just, or you've done, you've just gone for the full, full challenge. Uh, I have done one of the half marathons at Disneyland Mm -hmm. and we'll be honest, has a little bit uh, bitter taste in my mouth now, but for, I guess, a kind of interesting reason, Mm -hmm. um, I did the Avengers half marathon and the the gauntlet challenge. So we did the Thor 10K on um, a Saturday and then the Avengers half on um, a Sunday. And that happened to be the half marathon that I retore my ACL at. So I'm a little bit mad at Disneyland. And they're yeah. half marathons right now. Yeah. But I will be back. Um, but no, with Disney World, just running through Epcot. Mm. Um, they have their different countries from around the world in Epcot. And just running through it and seeing all the characters dressed up at every single mile marker. It's just 
Disney is amazing, but Disney World, you can't beat it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So do you have any advice, I guess, for people listening who maybe were like you, who weren't, weren't really into running, you know, a few years ago that might, might get them inspired to, I mean, there's several reasons from just our chat so far that they might be inspired to, to pick up running, I guess, from, you know, traveling the world to using it as a way to counter some of the, the treats that they're enjoying at mealtime, but anything that you'd want to share, just like tips with them or things to get them started? Oh, absolutely. It's just get out and start walking and then try jogging a little bit. And when you first start running or moving, you are not going to be able to, and you know, if you can, great, but you're not going to be able to just go out and run a marathon. Even mm-hmm. for myself, my first race was a four miler and I probably walked half of it because I had never gone that far before. Right. And so there's no shame to walking. If you're tired, cool. Run a few minutes, walk a few minutes. And then next day, run one extra minute, walk one less minute. And you kind of just train yourself, especially if you're doing it with a friend and you're talking, next thing you know, you don't have to be sprinting. But if you're going at a comfortable pace, next thing you know, oh, wow, it's already been 10 minutes. Oh my gosh, we just did a mile. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of one of those things. And you just always challenge yourself just a little bit. And I really support people also, don't be afraid of the treadmill. Everyone, Mm -hmm. I do most of my running Uh, actually on the treadmill, most of my training, my speed workouts are on a treadmill and everyone says, oh my gosh, I can't run on a treadmill. I get so bored. I say, me too. That's where I watch my TV. Mm. I will put my favorite show on and uh, tell myself if I'm going to sit on the couch and watch, well, right now, How to Get Away with Murder. (laughs) I might as well put it on my phone and during the actual show where I'm interested, I'm going to be jogging on the treadmill and it doesn't matter if it's a four, if it's six or if you're sprinting. Just move. And then as soon as the commercial break comes down, I go to a three and I'm walking. And Mm -hmm. then when the show comes back on, I try to go up a little bit more. And if you get your mind off it, you know, next thing you know, during the time that you're actually watching the show, you can get yourself to go, you know, from a four to a 4.1. And then the next week, try a 4.2. And then that's kind of how you can really build it up. But you're giving yourself realistic goals and little inclines to go each time while you're doing something you enjoy anyways like watching tv and next thing you know you just ran on the treadmill for an entire show Mm -hmm. I love that I love I love that you're encouraging people to to just just start small and that it because I think one of the biggest mistakes that I find for new runners or, or even like clients that I have that because I like to run, that's how I got into fitness and got interested in fitness after, you know, like hating gym class growing up. But is it they'll tell me, oh, I'm not a runner. Like, don't don't think you're going to get me running. But if, but if I probe them, I find that they hadn't really tried to run for more than like a week or two and then decided that that was it. But it takes, you know, at least six weeks, really more like eight weeks to develop any kind of endurance. So it's, you know, you you're, you can't expect to go out there and run a mile your first, your first time. So. Oh, absolutely. You gotta, you gotta walk a little bit and that's when, you know, give yourself a realistic goal, a fun 5k that you know, you're going to dress up for and you're going to get a group (laughs) together to go. You know, you want the photos. So when you go and you look at the time, just be like, Hey, could I have gone 30 seconds faster? Mm-hmm. And then now you have a goal for you. And then the next thing you know, you sign up for your next 5K. And if you go a little bit faster, you just go, oh my gosh, I swim faster. Can I go? And that's kind of how you just, you know, it's the best competition because the running community itself are so encouraging. And there's mm-hmm. always someone that will get out and just move with you. And next thing you know, you have a whole network of new friends you never knew you had. Mm-hmm. No, I love that. Yeah, I, I think sometimes people are intimidated by fast runners and, and think that they're not very, you know, they're not going to be very welcoming, but that's definitely not true. I feel like the, the running community, at least everyone I've met is very, very welcoming. So, Oh, absolutely. I love it. So, but you actually, you, you've done some good personal, I mean, your, your marathon time is a, is a three fifteen. So, so from, start, yeah. from humble beginnings, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. My, my first race at four mile or I was probably around the nine minute mile, which I know for some people it would still it's fairly fast but yeah I was always into soccer that was my training as soon as I had to run farther than a mile I said excuse me what maybe (laughs) if there was cookies at the end but it just kind of went little by little and my first marathon was actually my father saying oh by the way I signed you up for this and I went excuse me (laughs) and San um Las Vegas the uh strip at night is what it's called Mm -hmm. one of the rock and roll marathons was my first one and I was miserable. I absolutely hated it. 
towards the end, I, I'm never doing this again. I don't want to do this. Who runs this long? And as soon as I finished and I looked and I went, huh, could I beat that? And the next <laughs> thing you know, I signed up for another one. Just it's because funny how I realized that I'd die. I was like, oh, I might be able to keep going. And then I realized again, I could eat the pizza and my burgers and I have a huge sweet tooth and my ice cream. And I'd be hungry and be like, oh, that, yep, yep, that's equivalent. I'm good. And yeah, so if I can do it, anyone can do it. And I still sometimes really don't like running, but always happier after a run than before. Mm-hmm. No, that's, I, I can definitely relate. Well, I guess since, since you have the blog is run it off and there's that balance between, you know, the hard work, you know, physical fitness wise, and then enjoying some, some good treats. Do you have any like all time favorite foods that, that from your travels and, you know, that you would maybe recommend people check out that you could think about the, mm-hmm. I know I'm like off the top of your head, but. <laughs> oh no, I would say Ains, Ainsworth in New York, they mm-hmm. have this mac and cheese burger that is to die for. It actually has huh. mac and cheese in it, plus a second patty made out of deep fried mac and cheese. Um, okay. And that would probably be my, my New York go-to. Um, but I'm obsessed with Dairy Queen. I love their blizzards. <laughs> I will take their Georgia mud fudge with Reese's peanut butter cup any day of the week. <laughs> and even sometimes I will go for a run and I end up at Dairy Queen. I'm like, yes, please. And I will walk home because that's, mm-hmm is always a guilty pleasure, ice cream all the way. Well, definitely a good, a good treat for after a run, for sure. Just kind of cool off. Yes. <laughs> get, get some protein in there. I know they say chocolate milk, but I feel like, you know, ice cream can't be too bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, there actually is, a, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Halo Pop ice cream. I am, of, yeah. I'm really obsessed with that. Loving that. <laughs> when it's 360 calories in the entire pint, that is actually under four miles and you can eat an entire pint of ice cream and it has protein. This is true. And I, I mean, whenever I get them though, I don't, I don't eat like any less than the full pint. So <laughs> it's well, good and bad. Just put it down. It's just like one more spoon, one more spoon. <laughs> they do have the warning, I feel like, or one of those, one of those brands. I also eat Arctic Zero and there's, there's been so many like brands like that now that I keep trying all of them. I can't, I can't help myself. So. Oh, absolutely. And I would have to say Halo Top is, is still my go-to. I tried their birthday cake flavor last night after my last half marathon, and it did not disappoint. Yeah, I would recommend that's a good it. flavor. That's a good flavor for sure. Awesome. Well, what's next? Like, what's your next race? What's your next like city or or state that you're going to conquer, or anything exciting to play so, for? Well, right now I'm just kind of focusing on half uh, after I hurt my ACL. Mm. Um, I kind of put put off the surgery and had to retrain myself how to run and honestly yeah. wanted my toenails to grow back. So proud to say all toenails are one color <laughs> and any runner knows that they get bruised, but I am proof they grow back. They're normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of my own taking a break. And so my next marathon will be the Boston marathon next April. Mm-hmm. And so kind of just enjoying some half marathons. I have a turkey chop coming up. Nice. Um, for Thanksgiving, which I do every year with my family. Again, if you're looking for a first race for anyone to try, I highly recommend Turkey Trot because it's just so much fun and you usually get pumpkin pie at the end. At least the <laughs> one I love. It, it's, again, it's that motivation. And so uh, my next training will start at the beginning of the year and mm. that'll be for Boston. But uh, after that, I think we're looking into either the Arctic Circle or which that one is going to be freezing. Um, or I guess a different, different state have to kind of figure out schedule wise mm. when they fall. And I always give myself at least three months to train, mm. ideally four, and then make a, make a weekend out of it. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't realize that they had that trip to the Arctic circle. That's really cool. Yeah. Fun well, literally to talk about that is, uh, <laughs> they actually have to put up protection barriers and everything. So polar bears oh, don't yeah. come get you. Oh, I wow. thought they were joking. Apparently, they weren't. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, they're, they're interested in some, some food that they can run off, right? <laughs> I guess right? That's something exotic. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And they'll run to get it, too. Oh they my will goodness. run to get their appetite and then run after. I'm like, oh, my oh goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. See? But I'm excited to see how that one goes. Yeah. 
Well, awesome. Well, I, I finally made it, got my Boston time this year. So I'll have to, I'll have to be seeing you in Boston yeah. or in spirit. So, <laughs> Well, absolutely. It's, that one's definitely a must. Very cool. And I'll tell you where to get the best uh, ice cream after that too. It's a burger joint and they always do a Boston milkshake after. Oh, that it's sounds great. really good. <laughs> it was delicious. See, so do you, now do you have that on, on the blog? If I want to link it to the, to the show notes for people to check out or should I get your secret, secret tips? Uh, I can, I, I can throw it up on the blog. I think it'll be under um, the racing recaps for the Boston one. It's okay. on there. Very cool. Well, Vanessa, I love learning about your journey and appreciate you sharing your inspiration with uh, the listeners. Hopefully they'll, That's they'll be nice. adding in some miles or putting on their shoes for the first time, or maybe, you know, first time in a while after, after listening. Yeah. Hope so. And hope, you know, just encourage people again, get out there and move and the cookies are worth it. So just do it. <laughs> I love that. Oh, thank you so much, Vanessa. No, you're welcome. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi, friends. It's Catherine, and I wanted to pop back on here as quickly as possible to share two things. One, I wanted to second Vanessa's amazing advice to participate in your local turkey trot. If you want to learn more about why I think that's such a good idea, you can head to last week's episode with the marketing director of Baker Ripley, who puts on the Houston turkey trot, which I'll be participating in this year with my awesome longtime client, Meredith Rice, who's been a guest of the show a few times. And we'd love to see you out there as well. So if you sign up for the Houston turkey trot, use the running club Fit Armadillo and we'll be able to know that you're there and maybe get to meet up with you or at least cheer you on via social media on race day. So one other thing I wanted to mention is that next weekend, November 17th, 2018, Dr. Jason Karp, who was also a two-time guest on the show, he's a running expert, running coach. He has his PhD in exercise physiology. He's putting on a running certification program, the Revolution Running Certification Program, that's open to runners and those of us in the fitness industry looking to coach more runners and up our running coaching game by applying more science to the recommendations that we give. So I'm going to be attending that event. I would love to see you there. Dr. Karp was kind enough to give us a coupon code for the listeners of the show that want to, want to join in on that. So check out the show notes. If you aren't able to attend, but are a runner who would like help with your running in the new year, I invite you to shoot me an email and make sure that you're one of the first runners I get to work with in 2019. I will definitely give you a discount on services if you let me know you want to sign up before the new year so I can give you a little thank you for helping me not have to do as much marketing as I would have to do otherwise. I I love working with my clients. I love talking about running and all that good stuff, but I really don't like marketing. So I would love your help not having to market. All right, I'm going to let you go. I hope you subscribe to the show so you get to get inspired tomorrow with my next guest. If you are enjoying the show, be sure to leave a rating and review on iTunes and or Stitcher because it will make my day and encourage me to keep going with the podcast.